I'd always been a film nut, and I thought I could be another Jimmy Cagney. I thought I could be another Humphrey Bogart, whatever. I was going to electrify the Canadian theatrical scene. I'm still going to do it. Oh, you're 40 did. years later, I'm still going to do it. You've done it. <laughs> I wouldn't be here doing this if we were normal. No, that's true. <laughs> I'd be retired by now. You I would have, if I'd stayed on the railroad, I would have a nice pension. I would have been able to go right across North America free. I would have got a quarter percent off flights around the world, and I would have had this little pension if I'd stayed on the railroad. You said stayed on the railroad. Yeah, I worked on the railroad did for you six have, years. You worked for the yeah, but then I left the railroad to go to be an actor. Oh, there's a wonderful, two, two wonderful old timers around. Right. There were several old timers that I worked with on the railroad. One guy said, you're gonna quit? You'll rue this day, my boy. You will rue this day. The railroad, you can stay here until you get pensioned off. I was like 22 at the time. Oh, jeez. My whole life was just flashed by. And another old timer said to me, I hear you're thinking about quitting. I said, yeah. He said, if you're going to quit, do it now. Another couple of years, it'll get into your blood, and you'll be here till you die. That was the best advice he could yes, have given you. Yes, exactly. That was great. And it's true, railroading in those days would get into your blood, because steam engines were yeah. still running. You needed firemen, you, need, you needed railroaders. There was guys that I worked with on the railroad that were illiterate. In the 50s, sure. they'd started in the 20s. You didn't have to read or write, but they could take a boxcar apart blindfold. Now, they couldn't work on the main line, because you had to be able to read, but they, they were in the car department, which was repairs the boxcars, yeah. repairs the tank cars, whatever, and looks for the defects in them. These guys were incredible, but they couldn't read or write. Yes. It was a huge lesson for me as a youngster, because I thought, education, education, gotta learn. Well, these guys couldn't read or write, mm -hmm. yet they were hardworking, good, strong men with their families, hopefully sending their kids to school. Do you find, for instance, if you have a headache, mm -hmm. you have a, a headache, mm -hmm. do you lose it on stage? You bet. Yeah, absolutely. It's There's the greatest the way doc to do doctor, it. <laughs> doctor theater or Dr. Oh, grease yes. paint. Dr. Grease paint is the old oh, English yes, expression. Yeah. I, what I really feel good about, and what I've always felt good about, is that I've never left this country, outside of a particular time where I'm hired here and shoot a film in Europe or shoot a film yeah. in the States. I've, I've always stayed here, and I've always wanted to contribute here. And I don't, I just happen to like this particular piece of geography. Yeah. I am a loyal Canadian to the nth degree, a little bit of Welsh in the background, but I'm a very loyal Canadian. That's just what I happen to be. Yes. I'm not going to give you reasons why. That's what I am. I'm you were born loyal. in Canada. I was born in Canada, Welsh parents, yes. But I'm, uh, uh, the fact that I've stayed here all this time and made a living at it, I'm, I'm very proud of that, and I feel very strong about that. And the funny thing about being raised in Canada was that we got up and we all went to the school and prayed to some god that we didn't know was there. Then we sang God Save the King in those days to the king and queen. There. And then we were picture. bombarded with American literature. And yes. then people say, well, why don't you have any Canadian identity? I mean, the movies, the, the radio shows, the comic books, everything. It was America, Captain America. You know, I mean, everything right. was American. And, and it was very difficult to get any kind of identity. I guess it was. We were sort of brainwashed, weren't we? Certainly we were. And a lot of our history books were printed in England. Right. Which was even more. Right. I remember my dad talking to me. And he'd been in the British Army in the First World War, and they were talking about Vimy Ridge. And I said, well, I'm not sure we've taken Vimy Ridge. About, about, he With said, well, it was a huge Canadian yes. movement. And it was, you know how it was printed in the books? The Commonwealth Troops. Now, in the last 40 years, we have seen this town grow into perhaps the third, second, or first, depending on which night it is, theater town in the world. Yes, London, New York, Toronto. True. We have 30 to 35 theaters going at the height of the season here. Very exciting. I find that very exciting. And the fact that people are being paid for it, which is not, not a lot of money, but they're being paid. We have uh, we have a, a fertile ground for young directors, writers. Look yes. at the writing that's come out of this town. I yes. mean, it's very exciting. When I went on my first Canadian plur tour across Canada with a bus in the winter time, we played Calgary and Edmonton. We were the only Canadian professional show to play there. That's only like 38 years ago. Now all those towns have three and four and five theaters. Saskatoon has two. Right. Regina has two theaters. That's wonderful. Victoria. I've oh, played right there, across right? the country. Right. So yeah. I, I feel when I'm very depressed, when I'm very low and all the rest of it, I start to think I've been alive and contributing to a very exciting time during Canadian theater. I've watched it blossom and grow. We all have. But we've seen extraordinary strides made in the Canadian theatrical scene. The writing alone. I remember when I was a youngster, when we were in the late 50s, mm -hmm. we would always look to Broadway to see what was the latest hit there or to London West End. Oh boy, let's do this and show. And try to get it. And right. try and get it. And usually for, for amateurs, you could get the rights fairly easy. Yeah. And that's what we look forward to. 
No one was writing. Yeah. Now we have writers that are just world renowned. We have we have the development of young writers, which yes. is very exciting. What advice would you give a young person just starting out in our business? You really have to believe in yourself, believe in oneself. Mm -hmm. Because there are going to be, and it's unfortunate about this, there's going to be a lot of people who tell you, you may not know what you are doing. So you've really got to have a good, centered attitude towards almost everything. 